Hey, what's up? Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Hey, I'm TJ Van Slyke, uh, and I live in an RV in Portland. I've been doing it for about six months. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, why live in an RV in Portland? Like, isn't that for old people and, like, homeless vagabonds under bridges? Um, and I kind of argue, no, I think that, like, uh, RV living can become a, uh, it's, it's, it's like a stylish alternative to conventional, conventional urban living. And I know a lot of people online, there's a huge community around the idea of living in a mobile uh, situation um, in urban environments. And when I was younger, I used to um, kind of fantasize about buying a van and like outfitting it with shag carpeting and putting in a sweet stereo and like just driving around with my friends um, or like a cupcake truck. And uh, I figured, like, why not actually do that? Um, RV living is actually, it, it gives you like a feeling of self-sufficiency that I really, uh, I, I think it's totally false and it's an illusion because I'm totally dependent on our plumbing and uh, sewage grids, but, you know, whatever. Um, I, one, the biggest advantage, though, I think is the cost savings, which I, the green on here, you can't read. Anyway, uh, my monthly expenses have gone down dramatically, like, by a factor of like three. Um, so I only pay like 225 a month to rent my friend's backyard. And one of the biggest advantages too is the adventure. Like I, this is a photo of my rig down in Big Sur this past April uh, when I went to get an escape from the rain. And uh, it's just cool to be able to drive your house into the woods. Um, it's pretty sweet. Um, another big advantage and one that's kind of uh, close to home in Portland now is urban efficiency, um, which has kind of become a huge problem um, we're currently in a housing crisis right now because there's just not enough housing. Um, I take up a parking spot, so you're welcome. Um, and uh, so, so my, uh, my rig is a 1995 Winnebago Rialta. Um, it's uh, got like 66,000 miles on it. It cost me 14 grand to start, and then I put in like $4,000 in upgrades. Um, it's a Volkswagen chassis, so Volkswagen worked with Winnebago to uh, create a chassis that's really optimized for space. Um, and when you walk into it, you can't believe that that much house fit in that small of a vehicle. Um, and it gets decent gas mileage for the size. Um, and it also includes a full bathroom. Um, my, the most fun I had was actually upgrading it, though. Like, I put in a Bluetooth stereo and, like, bamboo flooring and LED lighting. Lots of days spent in, like, parking lots of large retail outlets, like, walking into the store and then coming out and, like, assembling stuff. Um, this is a photo of my workstation that I put together. Um, so I'm able to do all my work from inside the RV. Um, and uh, I took out the two front bucket seats that were uh, originally in there and, you know, laid down bamboo flooring and put in new furniture. Um, one of the biggest advantages, though, that I didn't even think about when I started doing this was the fact that my house is so small that it takes me, like, 10 minutes to clean the whole thing. So, like... It's seriously like I wipe, I sponge, like sponge mop the floor and then like put away the three things I own and then I'm like go out and do whatever I want. Um, and uh, it's just, yeah, and it's also just a really cozy space. Like um, I didn't think that I'd be able to live with so few things, but honestly being a programmer and a designer, like I need my computer and an iPad and that's about it. Um, this is actually a kitchen that I put together, um, and it's not quite done, but I did a whole new backsplash. There was originally like this really awkward like uh, toaster oven that came with it, um, but I cook in here like almost every single day, and I love it. You just have to keep the window open or else you almost die of carbon monoxide. And uh, <laughs> the, this, uh, the one big downside, though, is uh, you have to go dump your poop somewhere, uh, which, like, whatever. It's like a half hour. It's not a huge deal. Uh, but I just do that up at the local RV park, and it's like 10 bucks. Um, and then the other big downside is, like, uh, it's really annoying to drive. Like, you'd think, like, yeah, baller, like, rolling down the street like a Hummer, but it's actually kind of like driving a school bus. Um, so I don't drive it very much. Um, and then the other downside, which I'm hoping to alleviate tonight, unless y'all think I'm crazy, is the fact that there's a huge stigma and most people think I'm a hippie or a redneck. Um, but I'm neither of those, so hi. Uh, <laughs> And then the last downside, which hopefully some of you will be able to shed some light on maybe after with a beer, is it's illegal in Portland to do this. Um, I'm parked in a residential lot. I'm not hurting anyone. Um, and I pay rent, which I assume goes into property taxes somehow. So uh, let me stay, because I'm not hurting anyone. 
Um, if you want to learn more about RV living, specifically urban RV living in the model of uh, motorhome that I have, check out The Tiniest Mansion. It's an uh, ebook by Tynan. If you go to tynan.com, you can find it. And lastly, a personal plug, um, if you want to check out my own experiences, uh, I wrote a free ebook called Minify, um, which you can get at minifybook.com. And it kind of goes over like all of my philosophies that I've kind of learned over the past few months of doing this. Um, and special thanks to Ben Latterell for uh, all the photos. So thank you.